Hey everyone, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, my one of my best friends, uh, Julie Yak. Uh, I've known Julie for, for many, many years now and I really appreciate that she's willing to join uh, us today on our Power Pages A Decade's Journey with Friends that we're doing to celebrate Engineered Code's 10th uh, anniversary uh, and using it as a chance to talk to all of our friends in the uh, Power Platform community and just talk about their experiences with with the product that we've you know, known and loved for all these years. So, uh, Julie, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce it yourself, tell us what you do for a living and what, what you do for fun. Well, thank you so much for having me, Nick. I am Julie Yak, and uh, by trade, I'm a technical author and trainer slash solution architect. So, day-to-day -day is very unpredictable, but the best thing about being a trainer is there not, are no Saturday night training emergencies, mm -hmm. so, Nobody's going to call me because it's down in production. Uh, so that's kind of awesome. So that does give me my weekends. And nice. uh, what I do for fun is hang out with family, uh, my three dogs. My granddaughter just moved to town. So lots of busy things happening. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me, what, what's your first memory of ADX Studio or Power Apps Portals or Power Pages or whatever it's called today? <laughs> it was whatever it was called mm -hmm. then, too. Um so it was 15 years ago when uh, I got a random call from Shan MacArthur. Mm -hmm. He wanted to start a user group for XRM developers. Wanted my help because user groups are one of the things I do for fun, I suppose. Um, and he had this great new thing he wanted to use to support it. And we had about three weeks before convergence was happening and we had to get it all done and deployed and live and ready in three weeks. Fun, fun. Yes. And so for those of you who don't know, uh, Shan is basically the brains behind uh, ADX Studio, was what, uh, kind of the, the CTO of ADX Studio and, and now is uh, heavily involved on the Microsoft side. Uh, he's in charge of... Uh, the solution kind of stuff these days. So, um, yeah, Shan's a great guy. It was nice to see him a, a few weeks back in uh, in Redmond, and uh, yeah, so he's kind of the he's kind of the father of, of ADX Studio portals and, and Power Pages now. So, yeah. So, um, of all these many names uh, of the product, which one is your favorite? Uh, they'll always be portals to me. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be a pretty consistent answer. Um, you know, Portals just does such a good job of kind of describing what it is, right? So right. Um, I, I'm guessing that I think there were some maybe trademark issues or domain issues with having it as power portals. But uh, yeah, that seems to be a pretty, pretty uh, common answer. So I'm not offended by power pages. I yeah, the first time I heard it, I was I was like, oh, really? But it's kind of grown on me. Like, I, I, I get it. I'm kind of yeah. over the whole like. Yeah, Microsoft's gonna just name things, and we just got to get over it. So I'm, I'm fine with it. I've, you know. Well, you know, how long did it take us to go from XRM to Dataverse? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, they'll name it whatever they want to name it, and we'll do what we want to anyway. Exactly. Exactly. So, what is your uh, favorite feature of Power Pages? When you think Power Pages and the kind of the value it can provide, what is your, what, what's your go-to with Power Pages? Um, for me, it's that it is super quick proof of concept that can wow people that there's a whole lot of stuff happening behind the scenes and we know all that, but a quick proof of concept of exposing your Dataverse data on this portal, adding some security to it, and boom, you've got this test site. Um, you can do a proof of concept that doesn't suck in like 30 minutes. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and then you, but the problem is then you have to explain to the client why doing it for real doesn't take, you know, doesn't take 30 minutes either, but it's, one, it's a proof of concept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, uh, well, you know, what's the, your least favorite part? What's the part you wish you could change if you had a magic wand? Uh, that thing you just brought up that it, you know, quick magical proof of concept in 30 minutes, but the reality of the heavy lifting involved in making a good solid portal, mm -hmm. very big discrepancy there. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would agree with that. It's, Sometimes, you know, when you explain, it's like, hey, uh, I did one of these in a weekend. It's like, yeah, but that's probably not the, the quality or the, you know, it doesn't have all the things that you need, ALM and testing and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it, it, it takes a few more, few more days than that. So, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that, makes, that makes a ton of sense. So what's one piece of advice that you'd give to someone who was starting their first Power Pages project? Understand the data model and you'll be fine. That 
there's ways to make the visual appearance work. There's ways to make the security work. But if you understand the relational database and you understand the goals of those relationships, you'll figure everything else out. Now, do you mean the the like the customer's data, um, like the data model, or do you mean the data model of like Power Pages? Um, probably a little bit of both. Yeah. I would say that obviously we want everyone to understand the customer's data model, mm -hmm. but um, being able to understand the data model that's powering the mm -hmm. portal, the pages, the portal, the, the portal site. pages. The yes, yes. Um, that understanding that is super important as well. Yeah, I, I agree. And now, of course, with the enhanced data model, we've got some tweaks to it, um, different uh, schema names, different prefixes. But for the most part, things have, have remained relatively stable. Um, and honestly, like the ADX stu studio model that's been around for 15 years, um, I was thinking back for a recent blog post. The only kind of major update that's been made to it was uh, Microsoft kind of shifted the way multilingual worked. But beyond that, it's, it's remained pretty stable. So even with the enhanced data model, other than a, a prefix change, it, it's remained pretty stable. So that's a good thing to learn. And uh, yes. the good news is, is that it's not something you have to relearn very often. So, Right. Well, and um, we were always the test case for mm -hmm. new mm -hmm. stuff for ADX. Mm -hmm. So we had the most Frankenstein system you could possibly imagine. Everything that was just bolted on or some duct tape over here or some Velcro over there, we had a pretty good Frankenstein implementation. And so what, uh, what, what became of that site? Um, well, the user group accomplished what is it ought to accomplish, and mm -hmm. it retired. Okay. Our goal was to evangelize and get um, a whole new generation of XRN developers, and I think we kind of did. Yeah, no, that's certainly, I mean, still, uh, even though it hasn't been, like, I guess XRM was never really kind of the real name other than, you know, in some namespaces, but that's still kind of what everyone calls themselves. So. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, no, that was... That was great. Um, so I guess maybe trying to, is there anything you want to plug? I know that uh, a little while ago you, you did another one of your super popular 24-hour uh, conferences. Um, what do you got coming up here over the next little while? Um, well, I am doing a lot of prep for some conferences coming up. I'll be speaking at Dynamics Con, Dynamics Minds. I'll be delivering a workshop in Scotland in the fall at mm. Scottish Summit. Oh, Scottish Summit, yep. Um, and... Um, I've been using Copilot to help me with presentations, so that's kind of fun. So I'm sure that you do the same thing that I do, where you'll write this great proposal for a session <laughs> without making the session until it gets selected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so then the session gets selected, you got to make it. So I fed my session abstract to Copilot and said, give me an outline. Oh, awesome. I got to say that uh, I, I think Copilot is great. I just haven't... I haven't embraced it just pure. I'm I'm somewhat of an old school guy, and it's it's not that I other people in my company aren't using it, or it's not that I you know don't think I should. It's just yeah, it's I haven't gotten into the habit yet, and I really really need to. Well, it's Power Pages Copilot is in its infancy mm -hmm. stage, and that's a generous description. <laughs> so I was on a page, and um, I asked the Copilot to make me a button to navigate to Microsoft.com. And it gave me a new section on the page with photos of buttons. Ah, photos of buttons. Because like, that's like, what it knew how to do. <laughs> like clothing buttons? Yeah, like, or, yeah buttons. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one of the things is it seems like us here in Canada, that's we're somewhat lower on the list of uh, environments that get the co-pilot things. So, okay. um, so that that's also a thing is that you know, I think with Power Pages, I don't know if I even have the Copilot in the Design Studio yet. I know I got it in VS Code, but like, there's just you know, we don't we don't get to see it all the time. But yeah, yeah. All right. Anything anything else? Anything uh, anything else you'd like to to plug? Um. Well, come have a look at our training site, three six five dot training. We have some Power Pages training as well mm -hmm. as all kinds of other things for um, Dynamics and Power Platform. Lots of free stuff and subscriptions for the paid stuff. Yeah, I don't know if there's a better value in training out there for uh, Power Platform stuff other, uh, better than 365.training. So that's that's a great resource. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, Julie, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for you know reminiscing about uh, mm -hmm. the ADX Studio, Power Pages. Uh, really appreciate your time and, and thank you. Yes. Thanks for having me. All right.